These people have to work for you to produce one single material. Unity. You want your breakfast, your lunch, you go to the right cellar. Back of rocks. You buy your condiment, you know condiment? You're going to buy condiment, meats. All this cut together to produce one thing, one thing. Your name is Yusuf Muhammad Yahya, but you have many parts. Hey, is hey, hand, hand, leg, leg. But they come to produce one single entity. If I look at you, I say, You are Yusuf. Not you are Yusuf's. Plural. La ilaha illallah. So unity is there. In the prayer we pray, our Imam says, not What is it now? Oh Allah, guide us. Why do say this? Even if you were praying in the comfort of your room, you got to say, now. Nah. You don't say, if it is Say it and see if the prayer is going to be accepted. But I pray, Allah, yeah, you are alone, but you see, you have to look at the Ummah of Muhammad across the globe. Unity. You say, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka. Don't say, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka na'sta'i. You are alone. Unity. For the important value of unity, Islam has come to all of us to pray five times a day. In a highly systematized system, but an imam, I have to wait for him to read Fatiha first before I say Ami. Unity, system, and meticulous way of doing things. Not only that, we are commanded to pray once a week in a larger congregation and refer to Juma prayers. The fewer the Juma amounts, the larger the congregation is. Not only that, we are also commanded to, you know, congregate and convert and assemble in one place, in a year, in one geographical situation or state. I'm referring to the part of our understanding. We are the Ummah that know, cherish, and value security. If that is the case, then why should we be divided? The Quran is one. The Deen is one. The Prophet is one. The Qibla is one. The Ummah is one. Inna hadihi ummatukum ummatan wahidah. In one ayah, So my discussion centers in the importance of unity. But you see, what is the, what's the nature of unity? Because if people come together, they unite to steal. That is a negative unity. If women of easy virtue, prostitutes, will come together to commercialize their bodies and their ability, that is a negative unity. As far as we have to we are Muslims. Simply put it, if any people come together for an evil purpose, evil purpose, the United that is not the kind of unity we are talking about. <clears throat> so the first unity is to be united, to be together in obeying Allah Rabbul Alameen. That is why Ramadan unites the whole global You fast here in New York City, so also in Lome in Togo. Bermuda Islands, Argentina. All over the world, the Ummah is fasting. They are praying. They are in the same Quran. It's 
starting fast, at the same time, breaking sin at the same time. Of course, depending on your purpose. But the fast is fast. So the kind of unity we're talking about is the kind of unity that makes him obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in aqidah, in ibadah, in mu'amalah. Now our main problem today is lack of unity in mu'amalah. But alhamdulillah we are united during prayers, during hajj, siyah, but our problem comes when we are especially in a diaspora, for example. Diaspora. We are from Africa, most of us are You find yourself here looking for your legitimate sustenance. Legitimate. You want something to feed your soul or your family and back on our summer back on. Send them something to contribute to the sustenance of the soul chain. Come on, give me this back on. That I can help you achieve if you are dizzy about this. They say nothing scratches your skin better than your finger. My heart can you do that can make you over free. My heart or my heart can you do that can make you over free. <laughs> Nothing scratches your skin better than your finger. That can only be achieved if you are have it. That is why even the nations of the world have to be united to achieve their purposes. You have United Nations here in New York, united nations of the old world to achieve purposes. They have to be united. You have all here back of Africa. Organization of African Unity. 63 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Now it is AU. Unity. You have EEC previously in Brussels, Belgium. European Economic communities. Now they have what you call EU unity. European nations have single visa called Schengen visa that allow you to go to Germany, to Spain, a lot of European countries. Unity. Single currency. Unity. Now, if some nations have unity, we know about Muhammad. So, no. are supposed to be united. I know I cannot achieve something. I cannot build this mosque alone. My brother has to come. You can't cut in. Pull resources together. Purge something. Now, unity in one another. Today, like I have said, why are we doing this nice today? So I'm going to, inshallah, mention about 10 ways for achieving unity. There is many time to talk about things that cause this unity. We should be avoided. Point number one. Achieving unity is to discover a cause for action. Why am I here? Why am I here? For what reason am I in New York? You do. Why are you here? Because if you don't know the purpose of your existence, you are not built an animal. Because an animal eats and defecates and procreates. But it mostly a believing believer has a reason for everything he does. If I drink this water, there's a reason. If I come to pray, there's a reason. Allah asks me to pray. So that is very important. One particular key for this cover. Why am I looking at If 
you know the value of your course of action that produces love for it. So first discover the course of action. And it should be appreciated. Number two, it is part of ways of achieving unity. Respect for each other. I respect you. You should respect me as well. I value you. You should value me as well. We call this reciprocal gesture. That is very important. Because in any given situation, where there is mutual disrespect, there is little chances of achieving unity and Allah. So Islam tells all of us to love and respect each other. Even if one try, respect him. By saying to him, Salam Ali. Smile on his face. Be, com be, be compassionate on him. Be lenient, be understanding, be accommodating. You are a man, respect him because he teaches you. He brings you near Allah, Rabbul Alameen. He wants you against going to an utter destruction this life and hereafter. So you love him. Respect him. Honor him. He sits on the chair of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He deserves being respected. Respect your wife. Respect every single human entity. Whether Muslim or Muslim. Because a non-Muslim is a human being too. He shares the same destiny with you. Respect him by preaching Islam to him in a better way. Not through dogmatism, but through convincing argument and intellectual dialogue. So love and understanding produce good unity. Number three, obedience to leadership. For example, as Muslim Omar from Africa, Maybe you have one union of commercial people, Ghana people, Nigeria people, whatever. Yet the purpose of this union is to produce a of things. Who is the leader? Who is the vice president, the secretary? These Ummah have to be obeyed. That is important. If they give an order which does not contradict Sharia, that's very important. They have to be obeyed. That produces unity. And the leaders, which is point number three or number four, should be consultative. You have to consult. You have to consult. So you have to be consultative. Don't be individualistic, be collective victors. You do things collectively through consultation. If we have a system of consultation, when an issue comes up with a decision making, the leader consults all those concerned. Form your quorum. Bring the issue, everybody should bring what he has. Let the issue be discussed exhaustively and the decision be taken. Don't be dogmatic or you feel you have better opinion. People have views. People have right to be consulted. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to consult his wife even concerned what to be eaten in the house. Asking your wife, hey my darling, what do you want for our breakfast? For your lunch? For our dinner? 
Don't say, hey, the whole me asking her, yeah, the whole you. She's your wife, your partner, your life companion, the mother of your children. She's your friend by your side. Wasahibu bil jam. Your wife is your friend by your side. So respect her, honor her, give her what you give to her. Tell her nice words, loving words. Don't be harsh. Don't be arrogant. Don't be tongue-headed, hydra-headed. So in consultation, that's very important. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is only used to consult. For lots to be eating. During wars, he used to consult the Sahaba. As an example, during the Battle of um, Badal, the Battle of Badal took place second year after Hitler. In the month of Ramadan, imagine. Ramadan. The Sahaba were very strong, well built. But the Prophet had to consult them. He consulted the Sahaba. He consulted the Al Ansar. One of them, Mu'adhu Sa'adhu al Asli, Ya Rasulullah, Ka'annaka ta'anina, Allah now. You want us to talk? He said, Wallahi amanna bi. Wallahi bi kulli majid. Law amantana an nasiri ila minkil khamad na dhahabna. Ya Rasulullah, we believe in you. We accept you. Take whatever you wish from our wealth. What you have taken is the one who looks best than the one you have left. If you ask us to call on the face of water, we'll do that. He was consulting them and he was given encouraging answers. Thank you very much. Another important point for producing unity in the Ummah is be your brother's keeper. Be your brother's keeper like how? He doesn't know what to eat and you have more than enough. Support him, help him. He is struggling to get presidential permit, green card, passport, whatever. You have the means, help him. Don't say, well, I have got to buy. You can go to heaven. No. You've got in yours not because you are better than anybody. Dalika Fadullah Yutili Bay Mesha Allah Ulu Fadullahi. Tell your brother. And sadly, his great health issues. Not until he has been so humiliated, then you help him. Help your brother before he comes and tells you any of your help. 